Welcome back guys to part 16 of my Elden Ring Platinum walkthrough. Two parts ago, we're almost at the end guys, so I just want to say big thanks for those of you that have followed me all the way through, really appreciate it. So we're in crumbling Farum Azula now, and we're going to head forward along this path we're on, drop off to the right. I did put two beacons down there, but you don't really need to. This to begin with, this area is pretty linear, the path you have to take. It does break up a bit later, you know, be various paths to follow. But yeah, to begin with, it's quite linear. So come down here, drop off the edge on the right. And there should be a golden rune 9 on that last ledge which you dropped from. Come through here and now just follow the path. And it'll bring you to a room with some wolf type enemies. And just past those, keep an eye on the left, you'll see a doorway. And it'll lead you to a site of grace. Yeah, past these... Wolves, keep an eye out on the left. A little bit further, once again in the hallway. And there we go, Sight of Grace. Yeah, from here, now we've got a Sight of Grace in this area, we're actually going to warp to the Deep Root Depths and do a optional boss. Yeah, so either kill these punks or um, let them kill you. I could have killed them, but I decided to let them kill me. Yeah, so once you respawn, we're going to go into the Sight of Grace menu. The map even. And then we're going to warp to Underground and Deep Root Depths. And we're going to warp to the Prince of Death's Throne. If you remember, that's where we fought about five bosses at once. Uh, a little bit earlier. I think you have to rest at the Grace. I think otherwise it don't let you warp out. Yeah, so go Underground deeper underground and here is Prince of Death's throne yeah that huge merman in the background he's apparently a merman of death so once you spawn here you're gonna see fear deathbed companion yeah you wanna go to bed she'll join you yeah, you're gonna give her a cuddle tell her no I want to be held if you either get a choice to cuddle or not to be cuddled you always wanna to choose to cuddle that's it give her a big juicy hug but keep your hands above her waist and on her back. Yeah, that's it. Stick your head in there. And eventually you'll get some dialogue and you want to choose Talking Secret. And then Talking Secret again. You get some dialogue. And then you want to choose GIF Curse Mark of Death. This is an item we got earlier in the Divine Tower of Lyonia. I think it was called at the top. Yeah, give her the curse mark of death. It still squeeze you a bit harder. And the, you'll also get the Radiant Baldachin's Blessing. Talking secret again. Now just exhaust her dialogue. And then once you've exhausted her dialogue. Yeah. It's going to be hard to resist, but break away from the embrace. Go over to the site of grace. And then come back for another embrace. Yep, exhaust the dialogue again. We'll be doing this quite a few times. She's actually normally round table holds. When you first go there, you can go and get a hug straight away if you wanted. Um, so if you've already hugged her, you know, because you're feeling a bit lonely, you may have to do this less than what I'm doing. But the way I'm doing this now, this is if you'd never cuddled her before. So that's it. Go back over to her. She'll welcome you into her arms. Talking secret again. That's it. You'll have to hold your breath because you won't be able to breathe. Try and breathe through your nose. That's the exhausted dialogue, and then go back, and then go back to sight grace. And I think that should be the last time. Excuse me, madam. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, to sight grace. Yep, and for this boss coming up, you can put lightning affinity on your shield because this boss does a lot of lightning damage. You know, that sparky electric type stuff. Yeah, it does a lot of that. Um, and you can put your flame shroud and crystal tear back in your physic. I think I forgot to do that before. And we're actually going to spawn, we're going to summon the um, 
What's his name? Oh, they mimicked here for this fight. Oh, no more cuddles. I'm sorry, I should have warned you. Once you do this, you're not going to get any more cuddles. Yeah, and when you come over to her again, you get that diet, you get that choice to um, enter the deathbed dream. So jump inside, and there's going to be, yeah, this is an optional boss. It's called Lich Dragon Fortisax. Okay, so some you mimic, and it will go down pretty easy at this point in the game. I mean, you're supposed to fight this boss sort of, I don't know, a bit earlier, because you will be doing quite a lot of damage to him. But, um, yeah, this time we're actually facing him, should go down pretty quick. You can use Rotten Breath on him if you want to, just so his health is dwindling down while you're attacking him normally. Yep, and then just keep using Blasphemous Blade Special on him. Yep, try to hit him, that always helps. Yeah, see Blasphemous Blade, just quite a bit of damage to him, so he should die pretty quick. As long as you're attacking him and not just standing still, scratching and crack like I am. Yep, there's a lot of lightning attack, so be very, very careful. Keep your HP high, keep a distance if you need to, and just block. You can see what happens if you get too close. The unfortunate can happen. Yeah, you might be better to not aim onto him. Because you see, I'm heading, I'm actually locked onto his uh, stomach, his chest. But I'd be best off actually using my take his flame at his legs, which are always in contact with the floor. So it should always hit him then. And he's, that's it, he's KO'd. Equip the gold scarab, you get a trophy, Lick Dragon, Fortisax. And then you walk back to the Prince of Death's throne area. And with that done, we're going to warp back to the Crumbling Beast Grave in Crumbling Faram Azula. We're going to rest at Sight of Grace, we're going to level our faith to 35, that'll put us at level 118. And we're going to continue west, back outside, head past the dragon, and get the Crumbling Beast Grave Depth Sight of Grace inside the first dream after the dragon. Yeah, that's what I've wrote down in my text guide. I'm just quoting myself. Yeah, so back here, just said west now, yeah, a, a huge dragon will swoop down. Luckily, you don't have to face him. Yeah, so I'm going to level to 35, faith. Um, a little bit short, so I'm just going to pop some runes. What on it? What was it? 80, was it 86,000 I needed, or was it 87? Yep, so uh, I think about 15k more, and I should be good. Yep, three more of them. 5,000 each, I give. There we go. Right, let's get back on the path. Yeah, so out here, yeah, you got a massive tornado in the middle. Yeah, a lot of the glitches around the um, around the early game. You could glitch this area like right at the start of the game. You can glitch to this area, and um, but obviously it, it 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 can mess things up when you try and do everything legit. You know, so I, I mean, it can let you get a lot of items very very early. You know, just warping it from the start of the game. But but yeah, it ruins the story and I guess a bit and. Um, a lot of the glitches that did that have been patched, so you're not be able to do it anymore anyway, and it requires a few other more difficult glitches to get back here still, so yeah, we're doing it this way. So I'm putting some beacons down now. And we are going to Yep, yeah, see it's still just to the west of where we are at the moment. There's a there's a little house and then you've got a balcony on the west side. There's actually heroes ruin there. Inside the building, where I just put our second beacon, there is a um, ancient dragon book which uh, lets you learn. You give it to um, the guy with the shackle around his neck, the round shackle, or to the turtle, the massive turtle mage. Yeah, that's a turtle, he's a mage. Would you believe it? Yeah, hero's rune here. Yeah, I don't actually go to turtle in this in this guide, but um, if you wanted to um, hand that in, you could just Google it and find out where he is. We've, I think we have got a side grace not too far from it anyway. 
Yeah, we get that ancient dragon prayer book. That, that that's optional. It just lets you learn the ancient lightning spear and strike. I think it's called. Yeah, you get a side grace here, and you'll have probably have a few wolves try and swarm you. Yeah, just rest at grace to him, despawn him, and just is it north or south? Yeah, just near us at the edge of the cliff. Yep, yeah, there is a um, another bell bearing. Yeah, uh, but we're actually going to put a beacon here now. It's going to be a somber stone there. Beacon over here. It's going to be another somber stone. And then shortly after that beacon, there's going to be a site of grace. Uh, when I put that third site of grace, I think that's going to be a boss fight. Yeah, boss fight coming up is going to be God's skin duo. You remember the god skin from Volcano Manor? Yeah, get that guys. Somber stone minus a bell bearing four. I think that lets you... Um, I think you can give that to Twin Maiden Husks. And that gives you... It lets you buy Sombers 7 and 8. Or is it 8 and 9? One of them. Yeah, so grab a Somber Stone 7 from there. And then sort of continue north or west. Followed by north and then sort of around... To the northeast. The item over there is a somber nine. Yep. And continue on. Jump over here. And there's your grey site. This is last grey site before a little boss. And these guys do I think they do a little bit of fire damage. I know it's like their attacks like a sort of black death attack. But I think it can do a little bit of fire damage. Um so apply fire to that. Yes, yeah, weird out. It's not fire, but it can sort of do fire. It's like blood. You know blood. Blood's like, um, I think it does some sort of fire damage. Weird. Um, but yeah, put your affinity to fire. So that, like I said, that should block similar attacks. And then get past these guys and jump over the balcony. Now, if you've already fought against these guys and you died, you won't be able to jump over this balcony. Before the balcony, you have to go right and down some steps. And that pretty much bring you to a fog wall at the level we're on now. So if you jump over the balcony, die, go right, go down the steps and follow that to a fog wall, which will lead you into here. You can use sleep potion on these guys, a sleep pot. So make sure you craft one beforehand. I only use one. Um, it's not necessary, just makes it a little bit easier. So summon Black Knight Tish. You'll see Black Knight, he normally always go for skinny dude with me. But whoever he's going for, you want to use a sleep pot on the opposite one. But you want to try and lure the other one away first. I mean, I've already done it. Yeah. Summon Black Knight Tish. Whoever he goes for, put the other one to sleep. But make sure you don't put him to sleep too close to Tish. Because you might hit him by mistake and wake him up. And then you can take care of this single one. While the other was having a little power nap. And once you've got him, what I do, be quick because Black Knight Tish will start attacking him in a second. I begin with Rotten Breath. So choose Rotten Breath on the one which is sleeping. That will give him a bit of a sudden wake. And now we're just going to help Tish finish him off. They are a little bit resistant to fire. But it's all we've got at the moment. So we're going to use it. Yeah, and you want to try and get rid of these guys quickly. Because the other ones, because there's two of them, the other one will resurrect eventually. Yeah, so don't take too long. Here he comes. And then get rid of this guy quickly before the fat one spawns again. We're not used to sleep pot no more. We can let Tish finish him off and we'll use our take his flame. You can see at the bottom the health bar. Their, their health bars are divided amongst the bottom bar. But it's not like even. It's not like you have to kill, f kill them two times each. Um, the f fourth one that spawns, he's normally got a little... He's got a full bar, but it's probably like 50 health or something. Because you'll see, you see at the bottom there's a little tiny bit of HP left. And I don't actually have to kill this guy all the way. Just have to drain so much of his HP so it removes the bar at the bottom. And there we go. He's knocked out. And you'll get the Smith and Stone minus Bell Bearing, four. And you'll get a Godskin Duo Trophy and the Black's Flame Tornado Ash of War. Just remember to lob Gold Scarab in your pants equipped just before you get the runes received. Right, with them punks dead, we're going to level up Faith to 38. That'll put us at level 121. 
Yeah, we've got two more bosses yet. Yeah, we're not out of the woods yet. Two more bosses in this video. And one of them is a boss which... Probably one of the most annoying bosses for me, if I'm honest. Yeah, perhaps just because he's got so much HP. And he just flies about all over the place and you're constantly chasing him and... He does fight attacks as well as lightning. So um, when you apply affinity to shield you can't really... You kind of block both attacks because... Yeah, but you'll, you'll see it guys, we'll be there very shortly. So you see where I'm putting the beacons down? Do exactly that. And then we're going to go to the first beacon, then to the second, then to the third, and magically the fourth one after that. So continue down here. Turn left, drop off here. There will be some enemies down here, so get Bloodhound Step ready, equipped in your strong hand. Come over here, get this golden rune. Is it A11? Yes it is. How did I know that? Because I've played this before, I think. Yeah, come down here. Continue down. Just ignore the enemies, little doggies. Come down here, turn right. And carefully traverse across these floating ruins. You see my crappy beacons I put down, which are nowhere near where I wanted them to be. Yeah, over here is going to be a golden rune 12. Come back on yourself. And there's going to be a talisman over here. That's going to be the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman plus two. I think that's a legendary talisman. One minute and I'll let you know. Um, no, maybe. I don't know. Perhaps it's not. But I get that anyway because it increases your attack, I think. Yeah, um, sorry, your defense. But I think the Great Shield. Um, the the sh um, I forget the name of it now. This the the talisman lo looks like a shield, but it gives you defense. I think that one is still better. Yeah, sorry, I just trying to remember the name. Can't think of it. Yeah, so you jump over this railing here, and you get this draggle dragon temple rooftop site grace. And see where I've put them two beacons now. There's going to be a massive dragon there, raining down lightning on you constantly throughout that area. So you need to be quick. These two items we're going to get, they are optional, but they're pretty good. One of them is a Golden Rune 12, and the other one is a som Somber Ancient Dragon Smith and Stone. So, good idea to grab it. I think I perhaps die here, actually, thinking about it now. Yeah, continue along here. I'm just looking at my timeline, and um, in about 15 seconds, all my audio drops off. So, I'm thinking I'll die in a second. Yeah, so continue along here. The birds are annoying, so just be ready. The birds are going to be attacking you from behind. You can't see them. Oh, yeah, here. Stupid me. Do not do that. Yeah, so try not to be a donut like me. There's only space for one donut in the packet. Yeah, come over here near the dragon. There's a golden rune 12, but um, I'm going to come back for it because he's attacking at that area at the time, and I don't want to stop to pick it up. But this is the beacon in this gazebo. This is the somber ancient dragon smith and stone. Yes, yeah, so it's moved out of the way now, so I'm going to grab that Golden Rune 12 on the way back of that corpse. Yep, and then we're going to head um, southwest. Yeah, them, them birds are attacking you, by the way. If you wanted to get rid of them easily, um, you can start Bloodhound stepping away because they're all near the start of the area, and that's where they follow you from. You could quit and reload in order to reset them if you wanted. If, getting a bit annoyed about them following you all the time and uh, diving at you from behind and clawing your back yeah we're coming over here next to the northwest over here and into this tower and there's going to be a bell bearing right in front of this altar where it's worshipping and there it is the somber stone minus bell bearing five. Oh yeah so that's the that's the eight and nine and the four which we got a little bit earlier would have been Six and seven, I guess. Yeah. So up the elevator, guys. And this is going to be the last sight of grace in this area. And from here, we're going to be engaging two bosses. Well, two bosses and one NPC invader. So get a sight of grace. And we're going to go and kill this invader first. So just come up here. 
You know what? I think this guy kills me as well. I think he gets a lucky hit. Yeah, come up steps and turn left. Yeah, don't need sleep pots anymore. I'm just seeing how much I can create. So, with all them Trinus lilies and um, mushrooms you collected throughout the guide, I've been able to craft, what is that? About 13 altogether. So, yeah. yeah but yeah, carry on along here to the north. Yeah, there'll be an embassy invader. He's pretty much down here. And there's actually a legendary talisman which we need. Now just be careful because sometimes there's an enemy here. There he is. If you drop down that step too close to him, you'll wake him up like I just did. And he's going to follow me down in a second. Here he comes. Luckily, I've noticed that. Yeah, so just be careful. If you drop down the stairs near that enemy, you may wake him up and he'll come after you. And once you get close to that tower ahead, a MC invader's gonna spawn, guys. And he can hit very hard. So try to buff yourself beforehand. So as soon as he spawns in, you can just spam attacks on him. He will heal up once, but only once. He's only got one flask. He should have picked up more golden seeds. Yes, come over here. You'll see him spawn just in front of the doorway. But do not go too far into that tower because there's all other enemies in there which will um, aggro to you. Yeah, just kill him now. He would roll out of your attacks, but um, he's quite... The Taker's Flame, it does sort of knock him down. And you see he's healed, he's healed now. Yep, he can hit you very hard, so do not let him get too close. Now he's charging at me. Right, one more time. Yeah, so I mean, be careful. He can kill you quick. Oh, so it wasn't this time. It must have been on my practice account. Yeah, you get a trophy there. Legendary armaments. That's for getting every single weapon, guys. Yeah, so you should have got that. If you didn't get that, it's because you've missed a weapon, I'm afraid. But you should have got that. Yeah, once you get in here, kill all these enemies which are in here. Should be two or three. And then once you got them, we're going to loot this chest. Yeah, that's the weapon we just got. Devour, Devourous Scepter. That's the weapon that he drops when you kill him. Last legendary weapon. Yeah, loot this chest for the Old Lord's Talisman. Like I say, that is a legendary talisman. And once you got that... Yeah, it's going to warp back to Round Table Hold. To get ready for this two upcoming bosses. Yeah, what we're going to do now, we're actually going to um, upgrade our fingerprint shield to max. Now we've got a some uh, a ancient dragon smithy stone, and because we've got all the bell bearings, so come to Twin Maiden, offer her all the bell bearings. That's it, all the bell bearings that you have, and then come into purchase, and you need to have twelve. Smith and Stone 7s and 12 8s. So just purchase whatever the difference is. If you have 11, buy 1, etc. So we need 12 off each, guys. Smith and Stone 7 and Smith and Stone 8, buy the difference. Once you've got them, we're going to head back to the Blacksmith. And like I said, we're going to level up the Fingerprint Stone Shield to max. Oh, yeah, sorry. Smith and Stone 7, you only need 6. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just remembered. Yeah, we've already upgraded um, using... Smith and Stone 2s and Smith and Stone, sorry, 2 Smith and Stone 7s and 4 Smith and Stone 7s. We've already done that. So, sorry, you, you need only 6 Smith and Stone 7s and 12 Smith and Stone 8s. It's not, I mean, if you did buy 12 before, you know, before you actually caught me actually notifying you, um, it, it doesn't matter. You can use them for something else later, perhaps. Yeah, so we're going to level up the fingerprint stone shield now to plus 25. And you see that actually improves how much you block as well. So it actually improves its blocking efficiency, which is what we wanted for this upcoming battle. So now we're going to warp back to the Great Bridge. Yeah, I don't know what I'm looking over there for. Yes, beside, we're going to warp back to beside the Great Bridge. 
So there's two bosses now. You can either go the way we went earlier um, to kill that MC Invader, but turn right at the top of steps instead. Or you can go this way I'm going to go now. Now this boss I'm about to take you to, you want to make sure you want to apply the Lightning Affinity into your shield. This boss does a lot of Lightning attacks, but it does do Fire Breath sometimes. So just make sure you're not staying away. Make sure you've got Rotten Breath as memorized as well. You don't really need to buff yourself for this. This boss is resistant to almost everything. Um, more resistant to elements than physical attacks. But yeah, it's pretty much resistant to a lot of stuff. So what I'd say here is just use your normal R1 attacks. Yeah, just use your normal R1 attacks on him. I don't really do that too much here. But after doing the fight again on another account, doing that auto pop. Yeah, I've come to realize it's, it's better just do normal attacks on him while you're doing you know while you do what on, what on breath and that's actually applied and your summon is attacking him as well so you come down there back down the elevator and you head out this way carefully drop down that ledge off the side of a cliff and it'll bring you down here and down here we're going to get a prompt to lay down and it's going to warp us to an optional boss area yeah like i say this boss has got tons of hp and i use what on breath first we summon black knight tish And what you might want to, what you might want to do is, um, I didn't really consider this until afterwards. Yeah, so there he is. He won't actually spawn um, aggro until you get a lot closer to him. So you can summon your Tish ready. Yeah, he won't actually aggro until you get close. But the thing is, when you cast Rotten Breath on him, it, the first time it will apply with one charged use. But the second time, because they can become more resistant to it, it takes like two or three charges to inflict it the second time. And because the second time his attacks are more, they're more sort of, um, he flies around a lot more and it's more difficult to get it off. And by that time, your summon may be dead. So you may want to just attack him normally until he enters his second phase. And then in his second phase, when his health's at about half, then you want to cast Rotten Breath for the first time. So up to you, you may want to cast it twice, but that way you know that the second time you're going to cast it first time. Um, we're going to wait till he's attacking our summon. And we're going to cast Rotten Breath. Now be very careful when you summon that lightning. You want to just, you know when he's raining down lightning, you just want to dodge it until he stops. Because if you start your Rotten Breath and that lightning comes down on you, it's going to hit you. And also be careful of his fire. It's hard to sort of explain about his fire attacks. Um, but you need to dodge him by just getting a good range. I mean you can see then the range on it. You need to make sure you're a good range away. Uh, but if you always try and make sure you're around the back of him. You should always be able to get away from his fire easily. Yeah, always come around the back and just try and attack his tail with R1 strikes. Like I say, you don't really see me attacking with R1 much here. But yeah, here, this one, be very careful. Yeah, the fire breath, when he stand, when he does fire breath, when he stands up, that one, he needs to get well away, even near his back end. Because, and what he'll do here, he'll actually pivot on his feet and he'll actually... It's not just like a breath in front of him, he'll pivot and face towards you and he can still hit you that way. Yeah, so when he stands when he stands up and does fire breath, yeah, I almost died. And now he's at half health, this signals he's going into a second phase. So when he floats in the air, kills up into a ball and teleports, that's when he's going into the second phase. Yeah, and that's why you need to be very careful when he's raining down fire on you. Because that will happen, that can happen, yeah, and it can take a lot of damage. So when he's raining fire, it's best to wait till he stops before you start attacking again. There's his fire, so he's not standing up. If he's doing the fire with all four feet on the ground, then you know you can just run around the back of him. And I'm trying to apply rotten breath again. But as you can see, it, it's a lot trickier to hit it now, to inflict it. And when he teleports away, he'll always do lightning attacks. So just get ready to look where he's coming from, lock onto him and block. And you should be able to block most of the damage. There you go. You know when he rains, when he's raining down lightning, he'll stick his head into the sky and he'll roar. That's like a little indication he's going to do this attack. And there'll be one point, yeah, where he charges at you from the teleport and there's lightning coming down. And when he does these sort of two beams, just make sure you're blocking in case it hits you because they can do a lot of damage. But if you can get behind him, that's great. Like so, and I'm actually going to inflict 
And you can see he's killed my summon already. And I'm actually having a bit of trouble of inflicting rot on breath again. This is why I said you're probably best off. Like if you if you're having trouble doing this, try just not inflicting rot on breath until he enters his second phase. Because then you can sort of guarantee that rotten breath is going to take. Because rotten breath will it will take almost half his HP away. So if you wait until the second phase, that rotten breath should kill him. Yeah, so just block his attacks. And by the way, if you're having a lot of trouble doing this, then this fight is optional. Just leave it and come to this, come back to him right at the end of the game. When you've done everything else. Yeah, come right at the end. And I guess you can level up a bit more. Yeah, sometimes he will do fire breath behind him, like so. So you can be very careful of that. Yeah, when he does fire breath behind him, you obviously see him looking back. But what you can do, I jumped over his tail then. You can go and jump over his tail to the opposite side where the breath is coming from. And he's standing up, so I know he's going to spin around to do the fire. Yeah, you, when he's doing the fire behind him, you can run, run back, jump over his tail to the opposite side. And if you can get back up towards his sort of chest, the fire doesn't actually reach that far. Uh, but I didn't get there in time. When he does this, when he pulls the lightning spear and rams it into the ground, and then you see all them particles building up, he's going to do a massive AoE attack. So to get a good range away. If you can get the back of the tail, normally the back of his tail will be out of range and you can still attack him. But anywhere else, you won't be able to get close enough to attack him when he does that attack. So watch out for that lightning spear that he rams into the ground. Again, He's teleporting away. Very easy to dodge him. Just hold block. And he's almost dead. I've actually inflicted one breath at this point. So and that's going to kill him. Yep. And got him guys. So it's it's a little bit of an endurance battle that fight. You'll get that trophy. Dragon Lord plays it. Usax. Yeah it's a little bit of a sort of endurance battle I guess. But yeah that's one of the. I think one of the most annoying fights for me. Just because of how long it takes. And he resists a lot of your attacks. But yeah, once you kill him, guys, get a side of grace and walk back to the beside the Great Bridge. Like I say, if you can't kill him, just come back later on at the end of the game. When you've killed everybody else, you'll be a high level. Hopefully you'll do more damage, have a bit more defence against him, just because you'll be a high level. And um, hopefully you'll do it then. Okay, so back at the side of grace, guys, going to level up Faith. to um, 41 and this next box this next boss he does holy attack so go into your shield and you want to apply the sacred affinity so you block more holy damage yeah he does holy so sacred affinity onto your shield when I first came across this boss I mean it was the same with placid Usax that big dragon we just fought I died so much on these guys um, on these two the first time I tried like, I literally spent hours on them until when you know, until I went away, had a bit of think about things, did a bit of research, swapped my build around, and tried a few other things. Yeah, I had so much trouble on them to begin with. Um, so we come up this bridge. You want to take right, take a right path, and get that golden rune twelve and the somber stone seven. This guy, he's quite tough. Once you kill him, though, he will not despawn. Um, but like I say, he can be a bit annoying to kill, so I just leave him. Come through here, and I did die the first time. And don't summon your Ash to begin with, because sometimes you'll try and attack that Golden Knight back through the fog wall. So, and sometimes your Ash can get knocked off the side, which happened the time before this. So get to save point behind the pillar, and then summon Black Knight Tish. Once you summoned him, buff yourself. Good thing here is these this boss does not have much damage. Uh, sorry, he does not have much HP. And once you took down half his health. He'll enter a second phase, which is a little bit more annoying. So just buff yourself. And then do you take his flame. You see, he did quite a lot of damage to him. He's got very low HP, this guy. Now, in his second stage, be very, very careful. This boss goes mad with his combos, and he's got a crazy range on him, and he's always jumping around. So just block and wait, and to be very confident that you've got a good opportunity to attack him, and then use take his flame. But good thing here. He does, this guy does primarily holy damage, so as long as you're blocking, you should be able to block most of his attacks. Yeah, you see that? Look at the range on him. So just keep blocking. Always block this guy, only attack 
when you're confident you're going to attack him and hit. Like, now, if I can, no, oh, <laughs> luckily I wasn't actually playing and recording. Yeah, so just wait until you've got a good window. So I'm waiting for it, he's still attacking me. Yep, and he just attacks, which actually decrease your HP gradually. So make sure you're aware of that. So yeah, you can see my HP. I mean, it's not now, but it was decreasing gradually. So just be aware of that, guys. And that is it. Got him. Yeah, he gave me so much trouble to begin with, guys. But coming back in with the shield is so much simpler now. We've got a trophy, Malekith the Black Blade. And that is pretty much it for that video. Afterwards, you'll automatically warp back to Lyndale. But you see, something bad has happened to it now. And we'll just get this Sight of Grace in front of us. Lyndale, capital of Ash, Sight of Grace. And we'll call it a day. Yeah, so after the cutscene, you'll spawn here on um, Ash Hill. We'll get a Sight of Grace. And we'll leave it there, guys. Yeah, so I hope that one helped, guys. Like I say, if you're having trouble with placed Usaks, just come back to them later. You've only got to kill Malekith to progress the story. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you on the final episode.